Hi, my name is Maddie Wilkinson. I'm with the Moving Center. I'm a Feldenkrais Method and a Napanyal Method practitioner. And I'm going to present part two of our series of three talks called Moving to See, the relationship between movement, awareness, and vision in children with neurological challenges. And this part is called David's Story, Remapping After a Traumatic Brain Injury. This is David. At two and a half months old, David had a severe traumatic brain injury with a subsequent stroke. And these both affected the right side of his brain. So the left side of his body in terms of movement, sensation were affected, as well as his left visual field. When David was five months old, he came home from the rehab hospital and his parents were encouraged to do tummy time with him and have him practice sitting. But David actually really hated being on his belly. He would cry and try to get out of the situation. And when he sat, he looked uncomfortable. He was back was rounded, his legs were stiff, and they were concerned he wasn't ready for these uh, milestones. So they connected with me. When I met David, I was really struck by these, these things his parents noticed, as well as the fact that he seemed irritable or almost fearful. I knew that the trauma to his brain had affected his map of himself and also his environment. And I wanted to support him in remapping himself and his environment. So here are some strategies that I used with David. You will notice they're similar to what Aton used with you in the movement lesson. One is uh, slowing down to help the brain create new connections. We intentionally reduce the force and move with attention so that we can sense greater detail and begin to develop new pathways. We use variations to allow us to sense differences. And the variety is important for filling in the details and refining the maps. Mapping movement happens within the visual and auditory space, and it's the interconnection and the relationship between these streams of information that support and move the process along. We also use a developmental model. It means rather than trying to accelerate and skip to the next milestone, you could say, we look at what are the fundamental pieces that need to be in place for the child to discover that milestone on their own. So for instance, learning to stand, before a child stands, they have many earlier experiences using their foot against the floor, like he is here, that helps refine the map and the sense of how they can use that part of themselves to generate movement and support from the ground. So the videos you'll see, they start when David was already quite interested and enthusiastic actually about being on his belly. I don't have video of that earlier phase, but the quality of that process of him learning to achieve that milestone on his own was very similar and utilized the same strategies that you'll see in these videos. So here you can see uh, I start by taking off his, his pants so he can have bare legs and ankles. He can feel with more refinement, more clarity, his legs, his knees. And I'm taking time. I'm not rushing him. I'm not trying to get him to do something that he's not yet able to do. I want him to feel himself and clarify the feeling of his spine there. I touch his, uh, his pelvis as well. And filling in these details for him so he can begin to refine his map, his sense of his legs, his pelvis, his back, in this relatively new situation of being on his belly. Of course, on his belly, he can't see his legs. So he, it's, it's a new situation in which he can refine his sense of that part of himself. In the kicking, He's feeling the weight, the sound actually, and the impact uh, and the sensation of his legs against the table. And this is all helping him to refine and develop the map of this part of himself in this situation of being on the belly. Here I have this uh, little squeaky orange cube. And you'll see that playing with him. He's come away from the table a bit more. He's got his hands together, which I'll talk about again in another uh, clip. 
but I'm playing with variety, right? I'm doing it softly, abruptly, kind of gradually, getting him interested. Well, he's, he is interested. He's, he's curious. But this is all happening on the right side of his visual field, which is more available to him. But I bring the toy over to the middle, the midline, and even a little bit across, touch his left hand. He's interested, but he shifts his weight back over, perhaps to orient from his right visual field. And I'm not interested in getting him to practice something he can't yet do. I'd, I'd rather build, again, those fundamental uh, pieces that he needs to orient and discover that part of himself. Here he's resting, and when a child like David feels the urge to rest, I want him to rest because I know that sensing himself and the attuning to those sensations, those experiences are part of refining how he uh, feels himself and understands what, what he can do, actually, and senses what he can do. Here I, I pulled up his sleeve so he can feel his elbows and his forearms against the tape mat, and he begins to use the mat and the, the ground to, to pull himself towards this block. I'm touching his chest, and he lifts his chest actually away from the floor, but you can see his hands are together, which I'll, uh, again, I'll talk about in, a, in the next slide, how I deal with that. In this slide, you'll see he pushes, he comes up onto his hands and knees, but his hands are quite far from his knees. The distance is long, you could say. And his hands are, again, touching one another. They're not uh, separated. But rather than imposing or trying to correct him, I'd rather create the conditions for him to feel what works, what's comfortable for him, and what's more functional. So he comes down. He's in a developmentally less challenging situation. His weight is supported by the table. And just taking time, taking time to feel his chest, the weight shifting a little to the left and to the right, distinguishing for himself these two sides of himself that he can lean one way and the other. And he shifts and he comes back up onto hands and knees. And you'll see there he brings his hands closer to his knees. And uh, again, this, him generating it and feeling it, I think is an important part of the process. He pushes up, he's creating a lot of variety and I'm following and allowing that. And the variety helps him discover something new. Here he, now he's separated his hands on his own and he's really shifting the weight between one leg and the other, a little more towards his left hand or his right. And, uh, really giving him time to, to discover those possibilities. And again, he begins to lift his knee. I don't know where he's going, but I'm curious and I follow. And that's actually the pathway that he used to learn to come to sit initially. And the process for him to map this, in, this connection between being on his belly, coming up and then coming to sit is important for him to feel secure and really confident in that situation of sitting so that he knows where he is, he knows how he got there, and if he wants to get back down, he knows the pathway for that as well. So here David is uh, again in a developmentally less demanding situation. His weight is resting on the table. And in that condition, he can really uh, clarify and sense himself with a greater refinement here, I'm shifting the weight over one forearm, one hand and the other, pushing through, feeling the two sides of himself. So he can map for himself that he has two hands and two arms and they connect to his back and his shoulder blades and that he can use them and sense them dif distinctly from one another really sensing the difference between the right and the left. You can see he comes up then and really leaning now, shifting his weight over one knee and then the other, and actually reaching with his left hand to, to advance himself on the table towards the apple. 
I start to play again. I'm using sound, a little trying to interest him and in coming, shifting his weight and coming this way and that way, feeling the variety, the richness, and, and filling in his sense of himself in this situation, which is different, right? Being on, on this one knee and one foot, two hands. One thing I'm looking to clarify for David in the map of himself is how he uses and senses his spine, the musculature along his back, to lift his head, to balance and counterbalance actually the weight of his pelvis in space, and that this relationship, this fundamental connection between his back, his head, and his pelvis is really central to his organizing himself in these new emerging developmental situations. And again, there's a lot of variety in that process. There's not a, it's not a linear, straightforward thing, but I, I want for him to, to find and feel and sense that he can mobilize his back to lift, to orient, and to take in the space around him. Here, if it's come to sitting in a variety of ways, I bring this block over to his left uh, side. He touches it briefly, but maybe doesn't see it, doesn't notice it. And I don't force the issue. I'm curious and interested in him in discovering that for himself. And right there, he actually accidentally puts his elbow in my hand. It would be very easy for me to take his hand and touch the block and say, feel the block but I'd rather him feel it for himself and discover it for himself. So I'm waiting and he turns and discovers, comes into contact with it. And you see his father nodding his head in celebration of this moment of discovery of a really finding some object that he wants, right? The block on the left side and, and being able to uh, orient himself and access that part of his of the space around him here again he's come to sitting in, in a variety of ways and he can lean he's leaning on his right hand and then he's touching the floor with his left fingers looking curious and i'm touching his pelvis so we can feel the foundation of his uh, sitting where he leans his weight to the left or the right and really being interested in the whole space around him. There I'm scratching again, making a sound. He's interested on the left side. His right hand gets caught on his knee, but it, rather than correcting him, I, I wait for him to figure it out. And he brings his hand across so he can lean and follow my fingers in this, uh, on the left side, really accessing the full space around him beautifully. So David at 14 months is really curious and playful and focused. He moves with a refined quality and he has this remarkable uh, sense of orientation in space and access to the full space around him. He's also exploring new language sounds and his parents thankfully are not rushing him to practice new milestones because they really realize how the quality of the process has been supported by actually giving him time to, uh, to develop that uh, clarity in the map of himself and his environment in order to achieve those things with independence and uh, a sense of ownership, actually. You can see the beautiful crawling, the symmetry, and uh, elegance of that, and it's quite lovely to see. And this approach is based on an understanding of these fundamental conditions that our brains need in order to remap ourselves, the environment, our ability to perceive and interact with the environment, and move forward in the developmental learning process. Thanks for watching. Uh, we at the Moving Center look forward to hearing from you if you have questions. Andrea Hennen will have a talk now about another case study of another child that she worked with. I hope you check it out and look forward to talking to you in the panel discussion afterwards. Thank you.